Very often in the Power Query Editor, we're having to join tables together to get information that we need. This is a very common problem. And there is a scenario that I come across very often with a lot of my customers where I need to join to a table and there's a little problem that it creates. So let me show you the problem and let me show you how we're gonna fix this real quick in the next minute or so. Now over here on the left, inside of my data, you'll notice I have my dim customer table. It has some very basic information. It has the customer name, it has the email, if they're a subscriber, and of course we would normally have a lot of other attributes in that table as well. And I need to go get additional information. What company does that person work at? What is their address? What state are they in? And unfortunately, a lot of times when you're building these tables, you're pulling that information from different systems. So I have this data and I've brought in some data from let's say Dynamics, for example. And so now I have this other table called Customer Lookup. Well, you'll notice that Mitchell's right here. So I wanna do a join on email address and I know, I know, Email address is not the most ideal, but sometimes it's what you got. And I wanna return Pragmatic Works. And then I wanna do a join to Brian Knight, and I wanna return Pragmatic Works Cert XP in honor of our new certification training program. Check it out. So now I have that, that's what I wanna do. But if you've ever done a join before, if you've ever written T-SQL, you're going to know the problem that I'm gonna come across before I get there. So. Let's do a basic merge. I'm gonna merge these tables together and I'm going to do that on the email address. We got two of two matches, that's perfect. So now I'm going to click okay. And now we have this table. And if I look at the table right here, you'll notice that for Mitchell, it found one row. But for Brian, there's three rows. Now, if I expand this, right, if I click on the expand button here, I have two options. One is I can do over here under expand, I can just simply return the company. But if I click okay, it's going to do this. And now this is not a good dimension table. It's not gonna be the one side of my, this is a problem. And so how do I solve this problem? So let me delete that step and click on the settings wheel again. One thing I can do to set this up, actually, let me click right here, we've already done that. If I go back up to the thing right here, one thing we wanna do is really I wanna do an aggregate, right? I just wanna get the first occurrence or the last occurrence. I just wanna get one. I don't want every row to return. But you notice when I click aggregate here, and I'm gonna zoom in for this part, all I get is count and count. But watch this, right over here to the right, there's this tiny little hidden drop down. And if I click that button, I can now tell that I just wanna get the minimum. The minimum, the maximum here, it's the same thing, right? It's it's the same company, it doesn't matter to me. I just need to get a distinct value. I don't wanna get multiple values and duplicate this table. So that's it, that's the first trick. Click okay and voila, we did it and that was really quick. Now, let me show you another trick that's very important and I see this all the time. This is a lookup table. I need this table inside of the Power Query Editor as part of my cleaning and transformation operations. I do not want to load this table into Power BI Desktop. It's going to cause confusion for my end users. It's going to take up extra space. It's going to increase the amount of processing time. That would be a bad idea. So what I can do is right click on that table and tell it that I do not want to load that table. And I do it by clicking Enable Load. It's going to italicize that. And now when I click Close and Apply, it will not load that table. I'm only going to get the DIM customer table. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to take a look at the description below and take a look at the training at Pragmatic Works. And for a limited time, I have a discount code that you can use to get a really great discount off of Pragmatic Works training as well. So make sure to take a look at that. Hit that like and subscribe button and we'll see you in the next video.